Hello everybody, my name is Yelte and this is the 7th episode of our Ultimate CIs playthrough. We're starting off where we left off last time. Episode 6 was a pretty calm one, with temperatures hovering around minus 140-150 degrees celsius for most of the episode. So we move things around a bit to get room to slaughter the panthers that we got from Randy's exotic meat service. Although Randy's exotic meat service might change in the future due to the recent update. But we'll talk about that when it becomes relevant. We had a few mental breaks as usual. Closely associated with the lack of recreational options. But most importantly, we received a massive jade meteorite. And as we talked a little bit about last time, I have great plans for it. Which means... It's time for Table to prove his worth. Table decides to continue mining. I suspect he is eager to get a proper bed. Table is already at minor, but we're going to push him to finish that tile. As long as he doesn't get frostbite, we're quite happy with that result. So, let's build the jade bed. I believe the Ming Dynasty actually had those made, although we won't be going royal this time around. It's also time to cure meal for K. Table will have to eat soon as well. But he can start by hauling the jade for the bed. Quit that, will you? Alright, now forbid it. And just as Table sits down to research, Kay gets up, and you enjoy a bit of breakfast. Meanwhile, we can cue a meal for Table, because that should make him eat around the right time. I feel like he's taking too long, though. No, there he goes. And K can take over. Well, turns out that it was too early to open the door. Alright, his hypothermia is just about gone. I think he can finish that bed before he goes to sleep. So he won't have to sleep on ice today. I think he's going to be pleased with that. Excellent. Well, it's good, but that is excellent. I should really choose my words more carefully, shouldn't I? Anyway. Let's move all of this around. Because Kay gets a better bed. Partly because her work isn't limited by hypothermia. But primarily because she is the supreme leader of the autocracy. So of course she gets a better bed. While Table gets some shut eye. Kay is going to spend her day researching. In the early evening, Table gets up and starts his day by throwing horseshoes. In the meantime, Kay completes our machining research. You might remember that we're aiming for turrets, so she'll follow that up with gunsmithing. Kay decides to take an early night and we have no objection to that whatsoever. However, Tables belief that he is immune to hypothermia we do have a massive objection to. So he will have to wait that out inside with a bit of research. But we will come back to him once he's ready. We are still not interested in Table going further than necessary just to earn an additional debuff. Kay has already gotten up after just 5 hours of sleep and returned to her research. She's hungry, but more importantly, she has become recreation deprived. So we're actually going to let her eat a bit of jelly, because we don't want her to break when Table has important work to do outside in the cold. I think Kay is going to get a full 10 units this time, that should max out her recreation bar. 
It's a little over the top for my taste, but it should keep her from breaking the next few days. Table's back and he'll spend the next few hours getting warmed up. And now it's time for Table to finish that tile. So we can build one of the most essential things that we are missing. Because Table's namesake is as essential to Cable's mental health as Table is to our continued expansion. Let's just put that in the corner here. And we'll move this around as well. However, before Table gets rid of his hypothermia, it's time for him to get some sleep. Which means it should also be about time for Case lunch. Indeed it is. Now that Kay's done eating, she's back to work. And we have the first event of the episode. A quest called Hosting Elay. That sounds elvish to me. The Countess Elay Midos needs to get away from a precarious political situation on her home world. Therefore, she wants to visit us for 5 days and we must keep her mood above 18%. She will also bring a cataphract to our compound that she doesn't seem to value much because it doesn't matter if the cataphract dies and Kay will receive two royal favor for the trouble. However, we don't have the space, the food or basically anything that will satisfy a countess's need. So sending it straight to the bin is an easy choice. A few hours later we have the second event of the episode, a 44 year old stew keeper has decided to drop in. She goes by the name of Cross, so I can only presume that she's either neo-christian or constantly angry. But she's also naked which makes her considerably less interesting to us. She does have good skills though. Her cooking would give us fine meals, a medical passion would be great, and in my view tough is almost a necessity for melee pawns. Optimist is very helpful out here as well. You may have noticed, let's call it the occasional mental break during this playthrough. So overall she's a very good pawn. But she's too far away and we don't have the food to sustain free colonists. So I'm afraid she'll have to suffer the same fate as most of those who have come before her. Tables up and vigorously consuming his breakfast. Then he'll build our jade table. Normal quality. With 9 in construction I had really hoped he would do better. Looks like he wants to admire his own handiwork before he gets back to mining and will let him. Table is making very good progress with the jade. So I'm just sitting here making plans for what we're going to do with all of it. Looks like Kay has decided to go to sleep. We're going to let Table research till he's ready to traverse the sea ice again. It's time to send Table back out. We have also just entered April May, so we can look forward to temperatures above minus 100 degrees Celsius in the immediate future. 
And that is excellent. That should put us to 32 units of jade. Case also back up and having a simple snack for breakfast before she returns to her research. So we'll leave Kay to work and table to wander and he'll grab a meal while he waits for his hypothermia to dissipate. Alright, it's time for a soaking wet table to get some sleep. A little while later, Kay finishes gunsmithing. Next up, blowback operations. Looks like Table also suffered a frostbite on that last trip, so Kay kindly takes care of that as well. Several hours later, Randy rewards Kay for her hard work with a psychic soothe, which gives her a 16 point mood boost, so she probably won't be breaking for the next few days. Side note here, when filming, the sea ice in particular can be a little impractical. I don't know about you, but I can't see a thing, despite having maxed out my light settings. Anyway, Table is about to get up and go digging in the dark, but Kay is ravenous but off to bed soon, so we will actually let her eat those three units of human meat, because we need space indoors and the zoo offsets the raw cannibal debuff. Looks like Table will finish another tile on this trip, so we'll push him to do so if need be. Probably pushed him a little too hard there. We'll just have Table tend to himself before he starts researching. Time for his breakfast too, so he'll have that first. We are starting to run low on food though. We do have a few corpses around the map that can help us out with that, but that is certainly not where we want to be. But we do need to prepare for such an, what do you call it, eventuality. Well that fitted nicely with Table's hypothermia, so he's already ready for another trip. Alright, time to get you back home. Kay must have heard Table at the door because she's up before our 6am snap and she's dying for some food. Unfortunately, Kay has just gotten food poisoning, but on the bright side, that's the first time in three seasons, and since she's working indoors, it's not a major issue, so we can't really be too mad about that. But while she relaxes for a bit, Sabre's going to research till he's ready to go back out again. During the run to the Jade, Table's Frostbite healed, and he'll get to finish another tile on this trip. That puts us to about 87 units of Jade. I think we're doing very well with that. But right now, our main concern is our food supply. But we're not going to try to address that problem before Kay is over her food poisoning. Kay's food poisoning has reached Major at this point and that has a lot of adverse effects on her. Now that Table is back, he's just gonna go to sleep. Kay has a few debuffs here. Obviously the raw cannibalism debuff is the major issue, so we'll just have to hope that she can hold on for another eight hours. She also has the trapped underground debuff, which is certainly not ideal, and in time, that's going to get worse. But at least, Kay's bruises from their little scuffle last episode has finally healed. However, her mood is tanking and we're low on food. So, we're going to feed her the last raw meat as well. Although, 
that might very well induce a break. Well, Sable has decided to research for a bit and will let him in the hope that K will take the opportunity to gain the fully satisfied recreation buff. Now it's time for Table to eat. Table, we've talked about this. Leave K alone. And how messed up is it to do that when she's in a terrible state? Feel the room, Table. Feel the room. At least, it seems that K has gotten her own back by poisoning Table. So he would know exactly how it feels. But... That also means that there will be no mining today. Alright, this isn't going to work. K keeps throwing up and she's already an extreme break risk. So what we're going to do is just not feed her. Because our food supply can't handle it. Instead, we'll give her a little mood boost from her passion. Which means we'll have to wait for the break, the bed... Or for K to be recovering from the food poisoning. Well, she is going to starve through the night. But it seems that we did manage to avoid a mental break. Because K's condition should have improved by morning. K is already starving. But now she's also recovering. So it's time for her to demolish that meal. Come on table again. How needy are you? There's nothing charming about badgering her constantly. Not to mention doing it while you have food poisoning. He does need some food badly. But like with K, we're going to let him starve till he is recovering. By the way, that's not something I'm recommending that you do generally. We certainly wouldn't be doing it if we had more food. But as long as the malnutrition isn't too bad, it should cost us less food than the poisoning. But both are terrible for our food supply. Kay's up and about again, so she'll take over the research and hopefully Table will get a bit of recreation before he turns in or breaks down. There we go. To be completely honest, I'm kind of amazed that he didn't break there. Well, meanwhile, Kay's back to her old self. She's also finished blowback operations, so it's finally time for turrets. We are getting a lot of quests this episode. Linnea needs a rescue. Yeah, that's not going to happen, but let's see how far she is anyway. I really wish these quests were better suited for us, but our current situation is quite restricting. Just an hour later, our psychic soup ends. That lasted a little under two days, and as far as I can remember, they last one and a half to three and a half days, so that's not great in terms of duration. But at least it did help Kay through her ordeal. Again? Randy, you're killing me. Or, alternatively, Kay has gotten so tired of Table's constant declarations of love that she simply decided to kill him. But at least we're cutting out the recovery period from the previous poisoning. But it looks like it's time for Kay to eat, so I guess that we'll find out whether it's Randy or Kay who's at fault in a minute. Right, Kay wants to kill you, Table. And she could just have used her rifle on you in your sleep, but apparently that's not painful enough. Maybe take the hint. Come on, Randy, be nice. Food. 30 smoke leaf joints. Yeah, that's what we want when we're running out of food. Drugs that gives you the munchies. At the edge of the map too. So let's unforbid the door and see if we can't get K to take a bit of wreck time. Apparently not. 
but Table does think it's a great time to get some work done. So let's just take him off of mining. Actually, let's just put him on bed rest instead. I think that should work. Oh, of course it needs to be a medical bed. But we can just forbid the door again and let him wander. Days. Well, that's fine. Could have been a lot worse. A few hours later, in case off to bed. And Table will spend the night jumping around in her bed. But I think Kay will be fine, despite the constant disturbances. Table grabs a meal. Kay, what have you done to the food? Unbelievable. You're a terrible chef. At least Table is already having a mental break. So it doesn't matter much, we can't use him anyway. But this is getting a bit ridiculous. Kay's up and normally I would say something like, and enjoying some breakfast, but at this point she must have realized that her own cooking is the foodie's version of Russian roulette. So with much dread and a sweaty brow, Kay is eating her breakfast. How is this even possible? I have never seen anything like this. Just incredible. I will give you 10 to 1 odds. There are 3 meals left. At least one of them is going to be poisonous. This is just insane. Well, I suppose there could be one explanation. Do any of you know if this batch of meals has somehow, by pure dumb luck, been sitting around since one of the first episodes? Because that's a fifth time in seven meals. She almost has to have had zero in cooking to achieve poisoning the food that much. It seems like Kay wants to make the compound nice and clean in preparation of the tsunami that's about to spew out of her. But we don't need to watch that, so we'll just rejoin Cable later. One down, two to go. Alright, so Table is recovering now, but he's still dazed. And in spite of the food poisoning, Kay has managed to finish researching turrets. So now, we just need a ton of steel. Anyway, but as I mentioned, I think it was in the last episode, the high-tech research bench is going to be the real bottleneck for us. So, which we choose here doesn't matter that much. But obviously we still want to go with something sensible. We haven't finished the prerequisites, difficult word for a day in there, for flag armor. By the way, I have added that to the rules, because I forgot about it originally. No tainted armor. I generally don't mind using tainted clothes, as long as we get the debuffs, because I think it leads to interesting choices. But armor? is so important, particularly late in the game, minus 5 for a good piece of armor is an easy choice to make. So I just decided to remove that choice. However, for now, we're going to start on prosthetics, because it will become quite useful once the mechs start coming. No rest for the wicked, Kay. And you have been very wicked this episode. Like before, we'll once again wait for her to be recovering, before letting her eat. And Kay takes a little time to relax, so that should keep that debuff at bay. Interesting, we have a Wanderer. Let's check this Austin out. Well, that's not good. Major Carcinoma. So Austin is a farmer who loves tanning salons. In the Venn diagram, I'm guessing that's going to be an incredibly small intersection. Anyway, Austin also has a ton of scars and his movement is all the way down to 61%. So there's no way he's going to make it. And between Kay's food poisoning and Table's days, we can't get to him. So let's see what we're missing out on. Those are pretty strong skills. Having another miner would be nice, 
but he could also work as a backup researcher, builder, crafter. He even has good traits too. His gear is nothing to brag about though, so at least we don't need to be sad about losing that. A little food though, both the fine and let's call it the extremely fresh, and another albeit terrible weapon, with more range than the shotgun, are welcome. But since you won't make it, let's have him bring Salamander a bit closer to home. Now, let's see how far he gets. Well, he's probably not going to make it much further. With all his health conditions, I'm guessing he's going to be down by serious hypothermia. Yeah, that seems about right. And it's way too far off as well. We'll just let Cable sleep. Austin dies, just as our morning snap hits. Table's also up again, but unfortunately still dazed. An hour later though, Table's break is finally over. And although he is hungry, there is absolutely no way that we'll feed him any of Kay's terrible cooking before he retrieves Austin and the gifts he brought. By the way, in a similar situation, remember to retrieve in this case Austin, because we don't want to get the unburied Colonist debuff. Oh damn it. That's that old habit of mine. Carrying Austin doesn't actually slow Table down, so there was no reason to drop him there till table had gotten closer. And Randy punishes table with a little frostbite, but all in all, a successful trap. I forgot about his hunger, so he'll get to suffer through the last of Kay's meals. Actually, Let's have him take a survival meal when he gets up again, because it shouldn't be too long, and Kay can suffer her own cooking. A few hours later we have another cargo drop. Oh yes, Randy, you beautiful beast are. 195 units of raccoon meat. I mean, I've no idea if that's tasty, but Cable is going to love it nonetheless. One minor thing though. It's near the smoke leaf joints that we got earlier, and while we are edging our way towards the 100 degrees below zero mark, table's minimum comfortable temperature is at minus 51 degrees Celsius. And I just realized that I'm running long. Why does that always happen when something interesting is happening? Alright, we're going to take the risk. Of course we are. However, that will require a bit of a setup, so we're going to change some clothes around, that will add a degree or two. We won't use the chinchilla pants though, in the hope that that will still protect our components if K should have a break. However, while Cable is doing that, I have to say, if I've learned anything from watching crappy TV, it is always leave the audience on a cliffhanger. And since we are already running long, that's exactly what we're going to do today. Although I do feel kind of bad about doing that to you, but the episode will just get way too long. So, if you want to find out what happens next, click the subscribe button. As always, if you have any comments, questions or requests, write them in the comment section and I'll be sure to get back to you. Lastly, if you enjoyed the video, Please leave a like, it will be much appreciated. Thanks for joining us.